All the reports we heard following Auburn's first scrimmage of the fall, it seems like they were kind of confirmed in yesterday's practice. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I'm, I'm freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Look, quarterbacks, quarterbacks, quarterbacks. It's been the talk all offseason. Ever since Bo Nix entered the transfer portal, we've all been talking about who will Auburn's next quarterback be at yesterday's practice. I think Tuesday afternoon, we took another step in confirming that TJ Finley is, in fact, still in the lead. I know there's a lot of differing opinions about TJ Finley, and, you know, can he really take the step needed based on, you know, the play that we saw from him in the last few games of the 2021 season? I think we've seen some of that. So when the media was able to get out to practice yesterday, we got a 20-minute viewing window. And one of the first drills that we saw were the quarterbacks being paired with running backs. And that's always kind of been the litmus test of, okay, when are the ones out there? When are the twos out there? Because it's like, okay, if Tank Bigsby's there, whoever's next to him, like that, that that's the starter as far as, you know, the, the ones, the twos, the threes, in some cases, the fours. So Finley was consistently with Tank Bigsby. Robbie Ashford was next in the drill, consistently with Jarquez Hunter. And then Zach Calzada was third consistently with Damari Austin. Holden Gariner was fourth consistently with Sean Jackson. That's the order that we heard from the first scrimmage. And I think that's, um, that, that's definitely what we saw yesterday. And there were other drills. And, and if we have time, we'll get to, to some of those. But I think really the, the juicy stuff in all of this was when the quarterbacks started throwing to the running backs, the tight ends, and the wide receivers. It was all against air, but I think we saw three different tails when you looked at the three different quarterbacks that we're really talking about here. Holden Gurner took play uh, took part in this drill as well, but we really didn't see a whole lot from him there. All right, so Finley was obviously out first. You saw him throw an out to John Samuel Shanker, an out to Malcolm Johnson Jr., a post to Shedrick Jackson, and then kind of a check down type route to Tank Bixby. Then Robbie Ashford went in, and then Zach Calzada went in. And one of his thir- first throws was an out to Zaylen Warsham. He threw it behind him. Warsham did catch it, but it was not uh, it was not an accurate pass. He had to slow up and twist his body. Uh, he did not throw it high and outside like you want to see in that type of attempt. Uh, and then we saw Capers drop a pass. Once again, this is against the air. And so that stinks. And then he got back in line and they did the rep again. And the coaching staff was pretty supportive after that happened. But I do think that is worthy of note. That's kind of been um, that's kind of been something that we've heard from him. I don't know if we've really seen it, but we've heard it. Um, hopefully that that was just a fluke thing. I think he caught everything else that was thrown his way. Um, Finley went back and then he threw a comeback route to Shedrick Jackson. And then kind of a stop in the middle of the field um, to John Samuel Shanker. He threw a, a, a pass to the flats to Luke Deal. He missed a corner route to Malcolm Johnson Jr. And then he threw an out to Javarius Johnson. Then Robbie Ashford came in and he threw a post to, uh, to Camden Brown. Everyone's favorite. Love Camden Brown. He missed on an out to, uh, I think it was Tavares Dawson. He hit a swing to... Uh, Jarquez Hunter, a post to Capers, a stick to um, 87 is Brendan Frazier, a corner to DeZalen Warsham. That was actually a really nice pass to Warsham, and then an out to Jay Fair. Then Finley came back in. They skipped somebody. They skipped Zach Calzada. <laughs> they went back to Finley. I think that's telling. Um, a great catch by Shed. They kept scooting closer and closer every time they they went through a cycle. They would scoot closer to the end zone. And so a lot of these were then passes into the end zone. It was a great catch by Shed. He had to adjust his body and, and catch it. A corner to VAR, a stick to John Samuel Schenker. He hit uh, Malcolm Johnson Jr. I believe it was kind of a slant. And then a swing to Tank. 
then Robbie came in and he missed Camden Brown. And then he missed a corner to Dawson. He threw um, to, I believe this was to Luke deal. And then Coy Moore had a drop. Um, and then there was a drop by deal there. Then Zach Calzone came in a Calzada. I didn't even mean to say that Calzada came in. Uh, he missed a stop and go to capers. And then you saw a great corner throw to Dezalen Warsham. Um, he hit a few slants and a few swings. And then th they kept rotating in and out. And, and we had this conversation here uh, on the Locked Out Auburn Discord. And the way Hokinson with On3 talked about this is he kind of charted completions. And Calzada, from a completion standpoint, looked fine. But when he threw the passes, when you're throwing against air, it's very easy to complete passes when you just kind of loft the football up. And that's what he was doing. He was not throwing darts. TJ and Robbie were throwing like passes that you would need to throw to complete passes against an actual defense. I don't think Zach was doing that. That's not what I saw Calzada doing. Calzada put a lot more air under it. It's like he missed a few in a row, and then he kind of was like, okay, I just want to make sure that my guys catch it, which I understand where he's coming from, but everybody's kind of saying like, well, the, the completion numbers aren't really the same, and um, I, I just think that is a worthy note there, and, and there's plenty of video out there. I just think... When the ball came out of TJ Finley's hands and when it came out of Robbie Ashford's hands, it was totally different. And I think that was concerning. What I saw from Zach Calzada yesterday, he looked, he did not look like a good quarterback. And I thought he looked better than what he do, uh, did a few weeks ago in the first week of fall camp because I made the comments when I was doing a show after I think the first practice, I was like, the ball left his hand better than it did the other guys. It didn't look the same. I don't know if it's a pads thing. I didn't, I mean, I didn't realize this at the time, but I thought in my head, I'm like, is he hurt? And then there were reports coming out and speculation that he did injure it doing something. And I'm like, hmm, okay. So before I even saw those reports, I'm like, he doesn't look right. And, and so I, I think there's a real chance of something, something just didn't seem right in Zach Calzada's game. So We'll see. And, and, you know, the there's a lot of rumors out there about his health and, to his shoulder and, and things like that. So I thought that was interesting. The biggest takeaway has to do, though, with TJ Finley. And I'll tell you what that is in just a moment. Hey, it can happen so easily. You're out with your friends or coworkers. You're putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many. It's time to go. And for a moment, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you're a good driver. You live nearby. You can make it home okay. What are the odds you'll get pulled over? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You, you kill someone. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. Drive sober or get pulled over. To me, the biggest takeaway from yesterday's practice had everything to do with TJ Finley. TJ Finley looked like a starting quarterback. It looked like it was his team. He had the confidence. He had the swag. He had the delivery with, with, with his football and his passes. The way the receivers and the running backs look at him, it's with respect, borderline admiration. I think he's won this team over. And then when Robbie came in, it, it just changed a little bit. And not to say that they don't respect Robbie or anything like that. I'm not saying that. It just seems like... It seemed like the cadence was different. It seemed like the the impact uh, of TJ's fin of TJ Finley's presence was was more than it has been. And so I think that's worth noting. Uh, to me, he checked a lot of the boxes yesterday, which is very very exciting. And so we will see if he continues to take that step forward. I think he is, uh, and, and that's really what we need to see. And boy, if he does. If he does what a lot of Auburn fans are kind of talking themselves into, because they've been talking themselves into Zach Calzada over the course of the summer, I certainly have, 
And now that it seems like it's TJ Finley's job, Robbie Ashford's not lying down and neither is Zach Calzada, but it, it seems like definitely TJ is the favorite here. Auburn fans are starting to kind of look at it and say, okay, well, he, you know, maybe, maybe it can work. Maybe, you know, he's got traits. He's got a, he's got a massive arm. He's six foot seven, every bit of it. But the, the team seems to respect him. And, and to me, that's obviously going to go a long way. We talk all the time about how much of a culture guy Brian Horson is. And it seems like Finley's really leaned into that. So that was encouraging to me. Other things that happened in practice. The starting offensive line from left to right. Killian Zaire at left tackle. Cam Stutz at left guard. Tate Johnson was at center. Keandre Jones at right guard. And Austin Troxel at right tackle. It's good to see Keandre Jones back on this list. Backup center was Avery Jernigan. And then the third center was Jaleel Irvin. He, of course, started at center in place of Nick Brahms in the bowl game. And I think we all remember how that went. So I think that is not a huge surprise. Jeremiah Wright is on offense again. He played at left guard pretty much exclusively. Uh, I didn't see him anywhere else but left guard when he lined up there. And so to me, I think that's something where it's like, goodness gracious, I think depth is going to be needed at, at offensive line, which is a shame. Uh, it, it really is a shame because I think you're really kind of seeing this unit come together. But the tackles, the tackles in all of this, uh, there were so many questions. I thought they were going to be rotating at tackle. And no, it's it's the interior linemen that, where the rotation is happening. So props to, to Zaire, props to Troxel for, for holding on to those jobs. It seems like the coaching staff feels really good about the guys that they have there. I think that's huge. I think that's huge. Other drills that we saw, we walked out there and they were doing this like, I don't know if it was like a balance drill or what, but they were holding a bag and they were kind of skipping two or three times on one leg and then like jumping over onto a pad. It was pretty interesting. They would do that and then they would go and switch groups and then they would go to do like there were some bags on the on, on the ground and they were kind of doing cuts, changing direction type stuff while kind of getting hit. So there you go. A lot of balance work early. And then we saw the wide receivers all line up together. They were kind of doing quick vertical stuff, just catching the football and moving. I kind of think the order matters. It really doesn't. But the order that the wide receivers went in, Shedrick Jackson, Tavares Dawson, Javarius Johnson, Jay Fair, Malcolm Johnson Jr., Jazalyn Warsham, um, Landon King. He is so huge. Like, he is just a massive human being. And then uh, Coy Moore was after that. And then they did this fade thing where like the, the receivers would pair up and I, I posted a video of this on Twitter, but everybody caught their fades, which was good. Very, very good there. So that's the gist of it. That I think those are the big picture takeaways, but man, just some of these guys that, that stood out on the receiving end were all guys that either Finley or Ashford were throwing to. Um, Finley threw a, a beautiful stop and go to John Samuel Shanker late in the process, as well as a stick to Malcolm Johnson Jr. And then he threw this awesome like sideline pass. It was a pretty tough pass to, to Tank Bigsby to his right on the right sideline, and Tank hauled it in. He uh, he did miss a seam to From, and then there was like an out and in to Coy Moore that he nailed. And once again, the, the difference here. I don't care about like what the completion numbers are. I don't care if somebody went, you know, eight of 10 and then somebody else went 10 of 10. If you're lofting all of the passes when you throw for 10 for 10, it doesn't mean as much if you're actually like the person who's going eight of 10 is actually throwing the football like there's defenders there and actually simulating a drill. You don't get better just by lofting balls up there. And, and I think that's what happened when you look at the difference between Zach Calzada and then. Robbie Ashford and TJ Finley. I think they were taking the drill and it, it just the ball came out quicker. The ball was on a rope. And I think that matters. I really, really think that matters. And I cannot stress that enough. All right. I talked earlier this week with freshman tight end Micah Riley Ducker. Get his thoughts on fall camp so far. What it's been like transitioning from the high school game um, to the college game. He is a true freshman. And also... He kind of gave us who some of the vocal leaders of this team are. 
I think some of those names may surprise you. So all that's coming up right here on Locked on Auburn. Joining us now here on the show, Micah Riley Ducker, Auburn tight end. How uh, How is your first camp at Auburn was, going? Yeah, it was really good. Uh, thanks for having me again. Of course, uh, I could be here. Yeah, but it was good. Good experience. Lots of learning. Uh, you could just you could feel it's a different level of uh, intensity here. Uh, you could tell things are changing around the 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 uh, the building, and you know people are in good spirits. So. It was good. It was a great, great camp. So that's great. That's great. As far as the uh, as far as like the first scrimmage and kind of the mental preparation, the physical preparation, because I mean, that's that's really the first. I mean, practice is intense, but that first scrimmage where you really seems like you're really battling for for, you know, playing time and roles and mm -hmm. things like that. I'm sure it's a very intense environment. What all was that like for you? Yeah, uh, it was a little different. I kind of just try to take it as another day, just another practice. Um you know, I, we got a great room, great position room. Lots of older yeah. guys have already kind of solidified themselves. Um, so I'm just taking everything I can from them. I'm learning. Um, you know, obviously I want to play, but whatever they, you know, if they give me opportunity at some point, I'd love that. I'm going to take it and run with it. But uh, just for now, you know, I'm just doing what I got to do, doing the dirty work, blocking, learning, stuff like that. So it was good. As far as the older guys that you mentioned and – I guess for the for this question, it doesn't even have to be the guys that have solidified a spot, but who are the guys that you've kind of looked to as as a newcomer where mm -hmm. you're like, okay, that's the leader. That that's the guy that I need to follow in the battle. Yeah. Um for me personally, I'd probably just say John Samuel Shanker um and Luke Deal. Those are two guys for me that just I mean, if I have a question, they they'll answer it for me. They're not too big for me. Uh if you know what I mean. Like yeah. Good people. Um, I mean, I went to Luke's wedding, like they, they brought me in. I feel, you know, a part of the group. So, um, that's good. But they're, they're my two, probably the best leaders for me just as of now, uh, as sure. a team, they're, they're, they're vocal leaders. Um, they're people who, uh, people want to listen to, um, yeah. same with, we got Tank Bixby. I mean, our quarterback room in general, like all three of the guys fighting for a spot, you know, they're, they're all vocal. They've all showed that they can play. So I think they all have a voice um, and people listen when they speak. So, I mean, in, in the quarterback room, I mean, they were competing back in the spring and you got mm -hmm. to see that has, has that competition kind of been elevated a little bit from spring to fall as far as you kind of watching them and catching passes from them? Yeah. Um, I mean, just getting more competitive, you know, everybody wants that spot at the end of the day. And uh, I love all three of those guys and I know they're working. So, I mean, it, it'll be fun. So. Right. Yeah. How much how much time does the tight end room spend with with the offensive line? I know blocking is a big a big part of what Brian Harson wants to do. It sounds like you guys want to run the football and with Tank and Jarquez and mm -hmm. it sounds like Damari's having an incredible camp so far too. I mean, yeah. those guys need the football. What is that relationship like between the tight end room and the offensive line room so far? I think it's pretty good. Just me being a freshman, you know, I'm still trying to learn all the calls, all the protections, things like that. Um but you could tell, I mean, every play that we go out there, we're, we're communicating with them. So um, it's a big part. We have to be super vocal. You have to be able to learn and, and, and go on the run. So, um, yeah, we have to have a good connection with those tackles and the O-line in general and then the offensive line coaches. Um, yeah, They're all good dudes. I love them all. So, yeah, but we have good connections. Michael, we talked about this last time you were on and you've partnered with the folks uh, at Saturday's, uh, Saturday's Count. And we've talked about, you know, the off-season workouts and, and fall camp. You do all of this work, and there's only so many Saturdays. Right. You, you, right. you want to make all of them count once they, uh, once they get here. Um, how is that mantra kind of carried into your preparation for everything? Yeah, it's big, uh, especially for me being a freshman. You know, every Saturday is going to be – I mean, if I get opportunity any Saturday, you feel me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to love it. I'm going to be thankful. So, um, just for me, we, we have this, this, this phrase is getting sold, and – Mm -hmm. uh, we got T-shirts, jackets, um, things like that, but it has only so many Saturdays on the front. Um, and basically, you can get it in any 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 team you want, but you know the Auburn one. That's where I got my T-shirt, my jacket. I got everything. Yeah, no, get the Auburn one. Get the Auburn get one. You get Auburn. it at, uh, at SaturdaysCount.com. It's yeah. the it's the easiest way to check it out. SaturdaysCount.com. Sure. Support Mike uh, and, and the folks that are supporting him. I think that's pretty cool. SaturdaysCount.com for uh, for all of that. So who's impressed you as far as going up against opposing defenders throughout fall camp so far? There's there's a lot of talented guys on that side of the ball. Yeah. Um, 
I think right now I'm not <laughs> to be honest with you. Right now I'm just trying to learn, so I'm not even really worried about that. Yeah, my coach, my, coach, my position coach tells me to go block somebody. I'm, it doesn't matter who it is. I'm trying to just go out there, and, you know, make a name for myself. So yeah, um, but just you know, the guys that have already you know been playing, it's it's great to watch them on the defensive side um, and just see how how different our defense really is. Um, we we have one of the best defenses in the SEC, if not you know college football. So. Um, the D-line is probably my favorite. Uh, they're a great group. They're all physical. They're all strong. Um, and you can tell it's just a different different level of intensity with that. So, I mean, I imagine you're coming in and just focus on getting better and going up against, you know, those guys that you're probably having to block uh, on the edge. Uh, I'm sure you've had to, you know, block Eku or, or, or yeah. Derek or all those guys. Like, that's a handful. If you can block those guys, you can block almost anybody. You got to try. You got to learn. It's just learning. Yeah, yeah, you have to be super technical with those 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 type of guys. Uh, they're super strong, super great athletes, great people, great leaders. So um, you just kind of you got to fine tune all the details. I talked about this a little bit with Coy Moore a few weeks ago when he came on, Micah. But I mean, you talk about you know being technical. You talk about just learning, and so many folks don't realize. You know, that, I mean, millions of people watch football every weekend, mm -hmm. but. So few people realize the detail that goes into like one specific play or like with <laughs> we were talking about routes with, with the tight end. I mean, you've got to focus on where you are in the formation, um, you know, the, the blocking side of it, the route running side of it, the pass catching side of it, the communication side of it. I mean, there's so many different things that you have to focus on before you can actually really play football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. hundred uh, percent. I, I would say when people ask, we're probably the second hardest mission on the field when it comes to uh, knowing everything behind the quarterback. Okay, yeah. Uh, you, have to know, you have to know what the offensive line is doing, whatever receiver is doing, um, pretty much the reads and protections, every route concept. I mean, it's just every shift, every motion, things like that. Um, but that's, that's kind of something you want. I mean, you want to be the guy that everybody's looking towards uh, to know everything and, you know, to depend on. So I like it. It's my favorite. Um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult for sure. Yeah. With the, um, with the jump from, from playing high school to college, I mean, how, how different is it from what, what you did last year to what you're doing now? Um, just, I'd probably say the biggest thing for me is just carrying over that, in, that, uh, aggression. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm always, I've always been an aggressive kid. I just, you know, knowing what you're doing will help you play faster. Uh, you don't want to be out there thinking, okay, do I line up here, you know, stuff like that. So um, just the more comfortable I get with the playbook, the better I'll get. But I, I'm comfortable right now. I feel like I'm playing well. Uh, physicalness is up. Uh, routes are good. I feel like I've gotten faster. But, yeah, we got a good strength coaches. They got me prepared. So, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, they're probably going to call your number pretty early in your career. I mean, all the folks ahead of you in the tight end room, I mean, it's a loaded room, but a lot of those guys are older. I mean, they don't have a ton of eligibility left. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, the fact of right now versus, you know, a few months in the future, like you could, um, you could be the guy. I mean, that's a big part of it, right? You got to prepare like you are the guy, no matter, no matter what. Right. 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 Yeah. You never know. Things happen. Um, but I know, I know they'll be with me. Uh, everybody in the tight end room, we all love each other. Uh, we yeah. all got each other's back, so that's awesome. No matter what's going on, I think we're all there for each other. So, well, Micah, um, best of luck with everything moving forward throughout uh, throughout fall camp, and folks are excited to see what you're going to do this season, man. Best of luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. So. Thank you so much to Micah Riley Ducker. Uh, I think that guy's a stud. Really, really big fan of everything he's got going on. That does it for today's edition of Locked On Auburn. We'll be back tomorrow to recap more 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 practice leading up to friday's big scrimmage you can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts of course and if you're watching on youtube please click that subscribe button we're trying to get to six thousand before the start of the season we got a few weeks i think we can do it if you'll help us out that would mean an absolute ton we'll see you tomorrow this has been locked on auburn